morning we're going to be looking at the error transaction process ID in was deadlocked on lock resources with another process has been chosen as a deadlock victim rerun the transaction. Uh, I'll link to the previous video. Um, I'm not sure what order these are going to come up in. However, this is an error. And that means that basically in, in this situation, let's say, there were two resources that were trying to, or there were two processes that were trying to access the same resource, and one of them got eliminated. So if you uh, look at the previous video, we, we discuss what happens if I run a transaction, I put begin tran, I run a transaction, and some other transaction tries to access the same resource. And in this case, what happens is the one that was trying to access the resource gets terminated. Uh, the deadlock victim, which I think is hilarious, that's a funny name. Um, so yeah, it get basically eliminated, and so that's why the the fix, if you would, is to rerun the transaction. You know when those resources are available. So the reason why I'm shooting this specifically video is because one of the things that you'll see a lot is people will suggest with no lock, and I show an example of that. I believe in the the previous video, which I'll link to again. But one of the things I point out is that with no lock is not always a very good solution. For instance, you might have data that it's okay if the you read the data and it may not be the most up to date. Okay. For instance, let me give you a good example of that would be like a forum, right? I mean it doesn't really matter if the date of uh, the data, I'm sorry, is the most up to date. It does matter, for instance, in the world of let's say trading. Um, yeah, if if, uh, if a deal for instance has been updated, if a stock has been updated, if a company adjusts its uh, dividends, it's, it's huge. And as a case in point, I'll give you an example and in real life is a lot of people don't realize that Yahoo Finance and Google Finance, as I cover in my ETL course, provide inaccurate data. It's one of the reasons why uh, I spend a lot of time in my ETL course. One of the things that we cover is where to actually get accurate you know, stock data. And people don't know this, but those data sources are not always that accurate. So yeah, you put in accurate data and you have these people who are you know, running all this analysis don't realize they're not even dealing with correct data in the first place. Well, it's the same thing as having an application that someone looks at the data and it's not the most up to date. So yeah, with no lock is, is definitely one way to, to go about doing it. And if it's not important resources, by all means, you could solve this by you know, throwing with no lock at it. Um, but that doesn't mean that's a good solution in every environment or even a wise solution. So be careful about uh, using with no lock. The other thing that I've seen this uh, situation happen a couple of times was so somebody was running a C sharp, uh, you know, SQL command basically, and they were not closing and disposing their connection, and so they just like there's this begin tran that was open and it just kept running basically and blocking other resources. So keep that in mind too, um, that your your connections need to be you need to commit your transactions or roll them back. If you're going to throw, I don't really like it when people throw commit or, or I'm sorry, begin tran in C sharp. I'm that's again, you should your transactions should be built to where you're not going to get those errors. Um, but anyway, that's not to me good database practice. If you're going to call that, call it in stored procedure. But seeing that directly in code always kind of uh, is very, very not a good thing. I should say. Um, so yeah, when you write code like that, make sure that you're closing and you're disposing your connection. Make sure you're committing and or you're rolling back your transactions. Okay, if something doesn't go well, roll it back. Right. Um, if something goes well, commit the transaction, but don't just leave something open. And so that can create problems because another C sharp, you know, um, process can try to access and it can't access it. Right. And so you can get this error. So this is one of those errors that really basically you have, let's just say hypothetically in this example, is a table, that's the resource, and you have a bunch of people or a bunch of different processes that are trying to point to it and get access to it. And at the end of the day, it's like having a pie and a hundred people want to eat a pretty big slice. You're going to have a problem. There's not going to be enough pie to go around. So just make sure uh, that you close your transactions and make sure that if you do use with no lock, the data that people are potentially reading is not something that has to be the most up to date.